Let the entrance of your word change their lives. Let the word impact your people. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus name. Shout amen like fire. Remember yesterday I told you there are three reasons, three reasons why they clap in the Bible. The first is to announce battle against the enemy. The second is to announce victory over the devil. And the third is to welcome the king of all kings, the Lord of lords, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, our savior, our master. The rod in the hand of Moses. The stone in the hand of David. The conqueror of conquerors. Magnify the Lord. Lord, we receive your blessing on the world this day. Let lives be transformed. Let people be impacted. In Jesus name In the name of Jesus Shout amen one more time You may be seated in the presence of the Lord What a joy and what a privilege to be here again this afternoon And trust in the Lord that this day's teaching Would really transform your life, bless your life Bring you into the fullness of all that God has for you in the name of Jesus one more time, I want to celebrate our parents in the Lord. Thank God for Baba Deboye and for Mommy, for Lua Deboye. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord for them. Come on. Many of you may have just known them now, but I have known Baba for like 41 years. When I was a young pastor in Foursquare, I had to be his Interrupter, I mean interpreter. When he came to preach there 41 years ago, I was his interpreter. One thank God for consistency, for them being a blessing, a magnified blessing to the body of Christ. The world celebrates them and the world talks about the grace of God on their life. And we must never take our blessings for granted. The quality of leadership over you determines how far you go in life. The challenge of Africa is not the absence of resources, but the absence of quality leaders. The oxymoron of Africa is that it is the continent with the greatest mineral resources, but the poorest people on earth. Because its problem is the problem of leadership. But that's not what I came to teach you. I just came to let you know. So when God plants you under a good leader, you must appreciate them. One more time, thank God for the leadership of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Come and bless the Lord. This afternoon, I'm going to try not to preach. I'm going to try to just teach quietly, if that is possible. I'm just going to teach Because what I'm about to do this afternoon Is to shake your mind Shake your brain Shake your thinking Move you From where you used to be To where you ought to be I'm to shake your thinking Because my teaching today Is about changing your mindset The problem with many of us Is that we are stuck in the way we think. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Very popular now with people. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you. But his heart is not with you. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God That you present your bodies a living sacrifice Holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service And be not conformed to this world But be ye 
metamorphu transformed by the renewing of your mind you cannot renew a concrete mind the place you are seated on today before they placed those tiles they first poured concrete then they placed the tiles once the concrete is set it is set forever unless you bring a sledge hammer to break it many are not making progress because their mind is set and my teaching this afternoon is what you need if you want to create wealth my teaching this afternoon is what you need if you want to move into quality leadership my teaching this afternoon is what you need if you want to see success in ministry my teaching this afternoon is what you need if you want to stop blaming the Nigerian government and start taking charge of your own destiny in the world of John Fitzgerald Kennedy ask not what your nation can do for you ask what you can do for the nation if you keep blaming the country and blaming your nation you will stay there forever because unfortunately the challenge of Africa is that some people have seized the mechanism of government but you can seize your own destiny so that nobody holds you in one place with your life and this afternoon like I talk about teaching on mindset I want you to know that there are two kinds of minds there is the growth mindset and there is the fixed mindset the one that I've chosen to grow growth mindset and then there is the fixed mindset when your mind is fixed there's a limit to what we can do for you growth mindset let me describe growth mindset a little bit for you a growth mindset sees failure as an opportunity to grow more a fixed mindset sees failure as the limit of their life once a man has a fixed mindset if he fails he says well that is it I can't help it my life is finished I knew I knew I can never amount to anything the devil is a liar I see you on top am I speaking to someone this afternoon I said I will see you at the top look at three people tell them I will see you at the top I will see you at the top I will see you at the top. A growth mindset tells itself, I can do anything I commit my mind to do. A fixed mindset will say, I'm not good enough. I can't achieve it. I can't be it. A growth mindset will say, my effort and my attitude determines my altitude in life not my master's degree there are many of us who have degrees but we don't have a growth mindset a growth mindset says my effort my attitude my will determine my altitude my climb but when you have a fixed mindset you tell yourself my potential is already determined there is nothing I can do I can never rise anymore but I came to let you know that devil is a liar where God has destined for you to reach the devil can't stop you he can't stand you and there's nothing he can do about you if you believe you say amen a growth mindset receives feedback as constructive a growth mindset if pastor Belema comes to you and said the way you behave just now is not good next time do it this way a growth mindset will accept it take a note on it prepare to change and demonstrate a new attitude a fixed mindset will see criticism as personal will say there's nothing we do here that's ever right there's nothing we do in this place that's ever good and when you have that kind of a mind 
You cannot go very far. I'm just beginning to lay foundation. Because you see, many of us, you will want me to show you 15 ways to do, to grow, to have wealth. 20 steps to increase your abundance. 17 things about real estate. 25 things about property. 17 things about how to become a billionaire. But if I cannot change your mind, I cannot change your money. Because you see, money is a neutral instrument. Money does not know the owner. It is just a current. That's why we call it currency. It is flowing. It is either flowing to you or flowing away from you. From today it shall flow to you. Your amen is very weak. If money is currency, some people's current is a little tiny stream. Others is a big river. I pray for you today, money will flow to you. And the currency will increase. Shout amen one more time. So look at me. For example, I run a wealth academy. We even have class this Saturday. When I check it out, you can just do MatthewAshimolo.com and you see the details. I'm teaching 20 to 35 year olds that they can make their wealth before they are 40 and not wait like my generation who waited until 65 to pension and by the time they even pension they had nothing other than pension and some some broken house in their village in Asia Maubiato. but your generation have an opportunity to break through have a, an opportunity to make wealth because if you have the right mindset, you can enter what your fathers and your mothers never entered. I pray for you today, your story will change. What your fathers never achieved, you will achieve a thousand times more. A thousand times favor. A thousand times testimony. A thousand times glory. Looks like only few of you believe. Those who believe, say amen again. Before I even go further, let me just tell you. My father served in the Nigerian army for 30 years. 30 years! And then he died in Biafra. And then one day I went to speak somewhere. In a corporate organization. And for my speaking for 30 minutes. What they gave me as my honorarium for speaking for 30 minutes. Was more than the man's salary for 30 years. That is what I came to teach you today. So you can sit down, fold your leg, or even sleep off because you've eaten too much lunch. Or you can wash your face and wake up. Somebody tell yourself, wash your face. Don't just wash it, shine your face. Growth mindset will say, I am inspired by other people's success. When you have a growth mindset, when you see success, you don't get angry. You don't get critical. You don't criticize. You don't belittle. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. This afternoon, this one hour may not be enough. Maybe when I come in the next session tomorrow, I will build on it. But let me quickly say this. Anytime you see success and you criticize it, you have just exited yourself from success. Anytime you see wealth and you criticize it, you have just exited yourself from wealth. Anytime you see a person who is blessed, we don't even know how he got his money. This Nigeria self, look at him. He's only 37. He's only 38. How did he become a billionaire? How do you want to become one when you cannot accept another man's blessing? Fixed mindset. Fixed mindset will react differently. A fixed mindset will, will when it sees success, it gives up easily. A growth mindset likes to try new things. Somebody scream, new things. Somebody say it again, new things. But a fixed mindset 
We say, oh boy, I will stay with what I know. And I will stay with what I know, even if it is not working. They will stay with what they know. A growth mindset is an investor mindset. It's an investor mindset. A fixed mindset is a saver's mindset. And you may not know what I mean here until I explain. Investing is different from saving. Investing is different from saving. In Nigeria, when you put your money in shavings account, I don't call it saving. Shavings account because the bank is shaving you. When you put your money in shavings account, the bank will give you 2% or 1% so that you can keep quiet. They carry the same money where you give them. They go give man to borrow from them at between 15 and 25% and they are giving you 2% and you are happy. Most of you who are seated here, you have no investment. Your money is in savings account. If you have investment account, raise your hand. I didn't even, I saw one hand. If you have savings account, raise your hand. You see now, you see, you see. Nearly all of una una get savings account. Then they shave una well well every month. They collect una money. They give una two percent. But you see, una no no even say the dangote where una they praise now una money they use. Hey, you don't know. Every morning when Nigerian banks wake up, their prayer is that Dangote must not die. Because you don't borrow money from all of them. He doesn't use his own money. The guy is smart. He uses OPM. Other people's money. Ah, Moshe, you better you. I'm just touching. You want to make a go on? You want to make a go on? The most exposed man to the bank in Nigeria is Ali Kodangote. He does not use his own money. He's using your money. And by the way, every time you go to ATM, you put your card, you're checking balance. Balance. Three million naira. It's a lie. It's not there. They don't borrow this man. You want to test it? If all of us here who are just with one bank, say GTB, if all of us here show up at the GTB redemption camp branch to withdraw money, there will not be enough money. It's never there. They don't loan somebody. They give you 2% shavings account. And they've given someone who is bringing back to them 25%. In the middle of COVID, Every bank in Nigeria declared a profit of no less than 100 billion. In the middle of COVID. So you need to change your mindset. Growth mindset is an investor mindset. They trade their hours for the future. Oh, I hope you get this today. They trade hours. They trade hours. But investors, <laughs> they trade hours for money. They trade hours for money. Many of you are selling your hours. But those who have a powerful mindset, they only trade their hours for the future. Please help me to put up this, uh, this uh, fan. I can stand without the fan. Let me feel the heat and finish the teaching. Rather than the paper being blown away. So put it up, put it up, put it up. Don't worry. Listen to me. Listen, 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 listen. Why did it take me three hours to get here yesterday? Did I say three hours? Three hours and 30 minutes. And let me shock you. Pastor Belema did not tell you. After three hours, I had to get out of my nice car that looks like a home which has a fridge, which has television, which has everything, and jump on Okada to get here. Yeah. 
I jumped on a cadder before mountain of fire to get here yesterday night. You want to know why? Because everybody in Nigeria is a person selling their hours for money. Eight hours every day. Wake up in the morning, you rush to work, you come back home, you have some food, watch television, you go to bed. Wake up in the morning, you rush to work, you come back home and have some food. Watch television and go to bed. Wake up in the morning and rush to work, come back home and have some food. Watch television and go to bed. That's how your papa, your mama, and my own papa and mama, now so they do and so they, they retire. Wake up in the morning and rush to work, come back home and have some food. Watch television and go to bed. So we jam all the road with cars. The time has come for some young men and women in this house. While you are in your room, let money be flowing to you. Let money be flowing to you. Let income be coming to you. Through the businesses you will start. Through the side hustle you will start. If I'm talking to you, shout, I receive it. And it's not in Nigeria alone. It's the same thing in London. I live in London. I've lived there 37 years. On Saturday morning, I rose, I will beat okay in London. Monday morning, the roads are jammed. 9 to 5 mentality. Monday morning, the roads are jammed. Because somebody told us that the only way for you to receive money is through employment. And I'm going to show you in the course of my teaching and today and tomorrow. It's okay to have an employment if that's all you have. But I came to shake up your generation to let you know. Nobody in Nigeria, not one, not one single one, not including the president, officially, 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 there's no one in Nigeria on a salary of one million dollars. Nobody. But do you know that Baba Mulika, who did not go to university, who is a contractor who is building houses, his profit in one year is more than a million dollars. Meanwhile, all of you wear suits, you put tie. You are speaking English that is breaking the glass. When they ask you, where do you work? You clear your throat first. <clears throat> I am the damage, I mean managing director. Your story must change. Your story must change. Your story must change. Your story must change. Sit down, sit down. I don't want to preach. I want to teach. Don't let me preach. Don't let me preach. I don't want to preach. I just want to teach. So Baba Mulika didn't go to school. I live in the area where there are some Baba Mulikas in Essex, London. These guys didn't have much education. Maybe secondary school, because in the United Kingdom, up to secondary school is compulsory. Your child no go to school. They will jail you, the papa. So, up to secondary school. That's all these guys read. Then they go and learn how to set up scaffolding. There is a billionaire in France whose only business is scaffolding. You will look at them and laugh. Look at these guys. Scaffolding. Better be careful, though. Make you no know, fall. You are sitting inside your own nice air conditioned car. Whereas, if you lose that job, you can't survive more than three months. Most guys will tie around their neck. They cannot survive more than three months. But when God gives you your own, when God gives you your own, your story changes. Not bad to have a job. But listen, when you have a job, you are selling your hours for money. But when you have your business, you are trading your hours for the future. It's a difference. And you know what? When you sell your hours, they determine how to pay you. They look at you. Eh, okay, first degree. Where did you go? Eh, Redeem University. 
What did you read? Banking. Okay, we shall pay you 70,000 naira a month. Is that all you are worth? Is that all you are worth? If you are worth more, then you change your life. You determine your destiny by your future, not the hours you sell. And by the way, oh, I can't do all the teaching in two sessions. I'll try my best because too much is rushing my head. Not only do you start a business, you scale it. Somebody scream, scale it. Say it again, scale it. Took only one person to start McDonald's. But if he had stayed in one spot, flipping the burger, he wouldn't have achieved anything. But he scaled it by opening several McDonald's around the world. So that there are 25,000 McDonald branches in America alone. 1,800 in the United Kingdom. So that whether he's sleeping or he's awake, money is flowing. Scale it. I told you I'm not preaching, so well, I like your quietness. Something is about to happen to someone here. <laughs> Investors accept their consequences. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. But this side, fixed mindset, savers, they complain about having no help. Nobody is there to help me. No one is helping me. I don't know anybody in Nigeria. It's all about long leg. It's all about being from one part of the nation. Shock them by succeeding. Investors, they quit strategically. When it's time to leave anything, they quit strategically. Save us. Fix mindset. They quit early. Little mis- little problem. I give up. I'm tired. Ah! They start a business. It's not working for six months. They've already given up. Save us. Growth mindset. They work with a team. They look for others who are doing the same thing. They want to arrive together. Those who have a fixed mindset. They are individualistic. They don't work with anybody. Save us. They are asking questions. What can we do? How can we be better? They come to seminars. They sit down early. They write notes. They get the video. Like the teaching of this conference. You think you heard it? You only had 10%. By every message that was preached. From Baba to Mama to Pastor Belema to Selman to my teaching. Play it several times. You might just be one day in your bathroom. And the revelation hits you. From what you had at the camp. Somebody's life is going to change. I said your life is going to change. Shout amen like fire. But the focus of my teaching. Mostly today. Is about mindset. You see I could have come and started the principle. Of the things you should do to grow wealth. But if I don't change your mindset. Then it can't. Because you see look 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 look. If I put a million dollars in your hand and your mindset does not change, the million will leave your hand. It will leave. I don't know if the guy who brought my books brought a book called 33 Irrevocable Laws of Wealth Creation. In it I quoted about 20 people in America and Britain who won lottery, millions of dollars, but today they are broke. You say, ha, how can they be broke? Yeah, because the money came, they didn't have the mindset for multiplying it. Money is not for spending. It is for multiplication. Did you hear me? I said, did you hear me? Money is not for spending. It is for multiplication. No money should come to you and go out immediately. It must multiply. And if you don't believe me, let me just stop here and give you an illustration so that some of you can wake up. Are you ready? Tell your neighbor, wash your face. Tell them again, he's about to say something, wash your face. They used my name to sell Moe, there were only eight houses in Moe. 
I was the first to buy land in Moe. I ended owning 900 acres in Moe. 900 acres. Pastor Belema, I had no house in Lagos. I used all the money I had to buy 900 acres. In case you don't know how big 900 acres is. It is 2 kilometers wide, 5 kilometers long. My land starts from Mowe and goes on to Papa land to Have you washed your face? Or you are still washing? Ladies and gentlemen, and I bought it when I was your age, 31 years ago. I refused to build a house. I refused to buy a nice car. Because that's the problem of this generation. First in our money. First in our... Mashesi Naira. One million dollar. Mashesi Naira. First in our homer. Homer, homer. Oh, one bell, I call me, oh, did they call, Bami Joe? Look at somebody again, tell them, wash your face. <laughs> yeah, I've bought Homer. Matter of fact, I've, I've bought up to eight Homers. Gave away seven. Still have one. Gave away seven Homers. But that's not where I started. By the time I bought, I was worth 100 Homers before I bought one. Before I bought one. I was worth 100 homers. But this generation, all we want to do is want to wear Louis Vuitton. They say, what trouser is that? LV. Shoe. LV. Your bag. LV. And even when you don't have original, you go and buy fake. That's not how to create wealth. Did you know that Nigeria is the highest consumer of, of champagne? Yes, sir. Google it when I finish. The highest consumption of champagne on earth is Nigeria. Did you know that Nigeria is the second highest consumer of Hennessy? Second Highest consumer of Hennessy is Nigeria. Global. But from today, something is changing. Your story is changing. Are you ready for the mind shift? I said, are you ready for the change of mind? So 31 years ago, I bought the land. So anyone who came to buy, they tell them, Ashimolo has land here. So people began to buy. About 900 acres in Moe. I didn't have anything. I had no house. Now I have a house, a small house in Lekki, just a very small one. Change your mindset. Because your mindset determines what comes to you. You can only transmit an idea which you have. Your thoughts must affirm the desire you have. Not a mere experience. Don't just say, I just want, if I can just touch the money. No! You need to be ready. Because the Bible says, He gives you power to create wealth. That He may establish His covenant with you. No one ever creates wealth or starts the creative power of wealth creation by mere spending time on wrong information, wrong desires. You need to have the right kind of mindset. Spend a lot of time knowing the picture, the desire of what you want. See it in your spirit. The more, the clearer 
and definite the picture of wealth creation in your mind, the more you can achieve it. Because you can desire it and it, you will increase in it if you can see it in your mind. Your thoughts must be accompanied by an unwavering faith that the things you are looking to are already yours. The beauty of Christianity is that we are a people whom we have a covenant with God. God said he will bless you. Somebody say, I will be blessed. Say it again, I will be blessed. You see, unbelievers may even practice what I'm about to teach and they don't experience it. But you have a covenant, my gem, a covenant with God that he will bless you. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they will live their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure. Isaiah 119. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. And the glory of this present house shall be greater than the former. Second Corinthians 8, 9. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Consider the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that he was so very rich. Yet he became so very poor. That through his poverty you might be rich. And God is able to make all grace abound unto you. In that you having all sufficiency in all things. Will abound unto all good works. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Deuteronomy 8:18, 8, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God, for it is he who gives you the power to create wealth that he may establish his covenant with you. I hope that is for you. I said, I hope that is for you. I said, I hope that is for you. But if you must walk in what I just said, you gotta change your mindset. You gotta change your mindset. Change the way you think. Change the way you see life. Hold on to the mental ownership of what you see. How many of you see yourself blessed? How many of you see you on top? How many of you see yourself turned around? How many of you see yourself in a new season? Somebody say, I receive it. Shouting loud, I receive it. But then after you have seen it in your mind, you must keep that vision. Even if you are living in face me, I face you. Don't let where you are determine where you are going. Believe the word of God. Know that one day there will be a testimony. Know that one day there will be a turnaround. Imagine an environment and a financial condition that is exactly what you want. Always see it in your mind. Even when things are difficult, never give up. Use your mind to form an image of what you want. Hold that vision. Hold it by faith. Hold it with purpose. You cannot spend your life studying poverty when you desire riches. You can't spend all your life talking about lack. Talking all the time about lack. Saying the wrong philosophies around. Misquoting the word of God. Join those people who misquote the Bible. They say, ah, hey, money is the root of all evil. Oh. Where did you find that in the Bible? He says, the love of. The love of. Money has no character. This money in my pocket, if I go to the stores and buy things, if they put it in the hand of a drug addict, it becomes drug money. If the drug addict buys something and they use it and give it to a pastor as change, it becomes money in the hand of a pastor. It takes on the character of the owner. It is neutral. It is flowing. Some people it is flowing away from them. And some people is flowing to them. From today it shall flow to you. I said it will flow to you. But you must change your mindset. No one ever got prosperous by thinking poverty, studying poverty, sitting down in lack. And listen, this teaching applies in all areas. Ministry, you want to see success? You got to see success in your mind. Business, you want to see success? You got to see it in your mind. 
blessing comes because you change your mind. You don't wait. Many of you are waiting. Waiting for one uncle who said he'll get you a job in customs. And you've waited two years instead of you to start something. Books and magazines which are filled with images of lack will not help your wealth creation. You must see it in your spirit. Life always moved in the direction of your dominant thoughts. Life always moves in the direction of your dominant thoughts. So if you think poor, you remain poor. You begin to think blessing. Somehow, God begins to make way for you. I pray for you today that your story will change. I said your story will change. So from today, use your own mind to begin to dream new dreams. To begin to see new pictures. To begin to think different thoughts. Man cannot shape anything without thinking of it first. Look at me. Everything around you as you are seated where you are or standing. Everything around you started in somebody's mind. Everything. Look at these glasses in my hand. It was one sand by the seashore. Ordinary sand though. Now they go park, come fire the thing. Until sand come melt, they come make glass out of sand. I think you know even ask where these things they come from. Now sand though. Now so, now so my optician come charge me, oh, charge me 500 pounds for, for sand. Oh, gene. I can't they wear 500 pounds of sand for my, but you know, they saw it in their mind before they created it to agree with my eye. The microphone in my hand. Somebody saw a microphone that has no cable. That makes it easy for speakers. And so they charge us for these cordless microphones. The cloth you are wearing did not appear as cloth. This wool appeared as wool on the body of one man somewhere. And somebody saw that if we clear this wool, we can turn it to cloth people wear. The shoe I'm wearing is some cow somewhere. Somewhere. And somebody looked at the cow and saw a nice shoe. Nigeria, what do we see when we see cow? We see mama. Whereas the shoe I'm wearing, Pastor Bilema, this shoe I'm wearing will buy, will buy four Nigerian cows. Four is a thousand two hundred dollars. You buy four Nigerian cows. When Nigerian go see the cow, like, hey, see mama. I see your story changing. I see your story changing. We're surrounded by opportunity, but we don't see it. In Uganda right now, because their biggest food in Uganda is banana. When you cut a banana tree and harvest it, the tree is useless. In Uganda now, they no longer allow the tree to be useless. They are changing it to cloth. They are turning banana tree to cloth. Changing it to cloth. You are surrounded by opportunity. But you are looking for job. You didn't know that job stands for J-O-B. Which means just over broke. Job keeps you J O B just over broke. That's why you ready to kneel down, do anything, make your organo sack you. Because if he sack you three months, you are in trouble. Most Nigerian jobs only keep you J O B just over broke. And I finished teaching this afternoon. I'm going to pray with you. From today, your eyes will begin to open. You begin to see opportunities. You begin to see favors. I said you will see opportunities. You begin to see favors. Shout amen like fire. And when I say opportunity, again let me talk to Nigerian young people. 
most Nigerian young people, all they are looking for is passion. They say, I want to pursue my passion. Oga, no pursue passion. Look for a problem to solve. Nobody is paying for passion. They are paying for problem solvers. You go and meet this one. Why are you not working? Music is my passion. I'm believing one day I will have a big brain. Go and look for a problem and solve it. Microsoft is solving a software problem. iPhone is solving a connection problem that makes life easy so that everything is in your phone. My iPad is solving a, 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 a wholesome problem. Wholesome problem. This light is solving a problem. Most people want to go. The last thing, I was one of those who used to teach that people should follow their passion. No follow passion. Passion no go put food for your table. Passion will not bring you into wealth. It is the problem you solve that announces you. Mark Zuckerberg did not follow his passion. He found a problem connecting the world through a simple social platform. It made him one of the top 10 billionaires on earth. Look for a problem. Look for a problem and solve. When you solve a problem, people will pay you whatever amount you say you want. If you follow passion, it will not work. But if you find a problem, you can solve it passionately. I hope I'm speaking to someone this afternoon. Too many young men and women stuck. They're waiting for a passion instead of looking for a problem. When you look for a problem and you solve it, the world looks for you. I declare and decree to someone's life here today. May your eyes be open. I said, may your eyes be open. I declare again, may your eyes be open. Dealing with problem is what I wrote in this book, The Creative Edge. These last days, those who are creative are taking over our world. Industries have gone, not only here, all over the world. Elon Musk created a car, pastor. No engine inside. My son bought one of Tesla's car. He opened boot. No engine. You know, my brain, Old Testament brain, can't look the car like this. I say, how does this thing work? Just battery and the, and the, and the, and the, and the motherboard, a computer brain, and then charging it. That's all. Ah, how can car do we no get engine? Because that's where the world is going. While Nigerians are still fighting over where to put cows. Instead of us to remove those young men from following cows. Some of them are extremely brilliant. But we put them to pursue cows. And we treat cows more important than human. Go to Botswana. There are more cows than human beings. And yet they don't do that. Botswana, 2 million population. Cows, 3 million. Anything I say, go check it online. This is the season for you to unlock your creative code. Deuteronomy. Exodus chapter 35, I mean verse 30 to 35. He said, I will pour my spirit upon... I spoke, he mentioned the person. He said, I will come to him in the night season. I will teach him how to fabricate the things to be used in the house of God. Where is your product? Because the day you create your product... We will come to buy it. The problem of nations in Africa is that they are always buying from abroad. Always consuming. Always consuming. There is a man or woman here. God has been giving you ideas. When you leave this conference, your idea will come to pass. Your dreams will become reality. Your vision will become reality. 
your creative idea will become reality. Shout amen like fire. Use your willpower to work with your mind. Just let everything start with your thinking. Then move it into material. Man can form things in his thoughts. Everything you see started as a thought. <laughs> the money in my pocket did not appear on earth as money. You know, some people don't even ask questions. How did money come? How did the paper appear? The paper was once a tree that they went and harvested the tree. They ground the tree. They mixed with some other things. And then they pressed in a machine. Paper appeared. In fact, Nigerian money is total paper. British money is a combined of paper and plastic. American money, where people want that for, is a combined of paper, plastic, and guess what, Pastor Bilema? Cassava. <laughs> Tapioca. All that nice American dollar where people want die for. There's tapioca inside. Don't die for cassava. Everything you see around you never appears in its final form. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of kings to find it out. I lay hand on you today, you will find it out. 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 out. Shout amen three times. Can begin to change your mind. Wealth creation requires thinking in a certain way. To think wealth when surrounded by poverty requires the power of the mind. The power of the mind. I got to the United Kingdom and found that people of my color settled for menial jobs cleaning. I got angry in my spirit. I began to go to all the banks and take all their papers. I brought it to church, studied it. Then I began to teach. I began to hold wealth creation seminars. Began to teach people how to buy property. How not to wait 25 years to pay the mortgage. How to pay it in 5 years, 10 years. Boom! There was an explosion in our community. People began to walk in wealth. Because it's not just the teaching. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. I believe the anointing is here tonight. Somebody is going to walk in a new season. Your story will change. Your story will change. Your story will change. When you begin to acquire a growth mindset, a wealth creation mindset, you become a master mind. A master mind. Man forms things in his mind. Some people, all they form is evil. He impresses his thought upon substance. This thing I used to clean my face was upon, was one day cutting on a tree and they impressed their mind and turned it to something I can use. Everything around you, the plastic in my hand was from Oloibiri. This is crude oil that somebody extracted plastic out of crude oil called polymer. And today we buy plastic. All the chairs you are sitting on, they were petroleum from our country. We exported it. They extracted the polymer and sent it back to us higher price. Because we are not creators. We are consumers. I came to speak to this generation because you are the hope of Nigeria. You are the hope of Africa. Out of this crowd... Men and women with the business with global footprint shall rise in the name of Jesus. Shall rise in the name of Jesus. Shall rise in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout yes. And when the church 
did not teach us wealth creation. The anointing moved somewhere else. Unbelievers began to get the idea. God said, I opened before you opened doors. We didn't take the doors. So so Microsoft took the windows. Windows blessed them. God gave you doors. You didn't take the doors. Microsoft just take windows oh. Windows. And they can't prosper. Waiting go happen. If to say you take doors. I am not shali brana teliranuzi. Somebody will catch the fire here today. You catch the revelation here today. Shout amen three times. I was preaching in Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast. Ali Kodangote's factory is there making cement. Ghana is there making cement. Zambia is there making cement. These people will not honor the gospel with their money. How many of you, if God prospers you, you will be a sponsor of the kingdom of God. Let me see your hand. As you have raised your hand, your hand will not go down. Your hands will handle wealth. Your hands will handle favor. Every problem you solve, God will give you uncommon solution. Uncommon testimonies. Now put your hands together. Give God the biggest praise. Come on. Give him the praise. Your thoughts influence your belief. Limiting belief are thieves. Limiting beliefs are thieves. Limiting beliefs are thieves. That's why you have two people come out of the same womb. One believed that they can become. They became. The other one believed that he's rubbish. He became. Limiting beliefs. Alter your thinking to be in agreement with the dream of wealth. Deal with your underlying belief. Because I know there are some of you who may be here today and say, I just want to go to heaven. Whether I don't get anything, I don't mind. I would rather have Jesus than anything this world of sin could give. Not to be a king in a vast domain. Nice song. But many times it has kept some people broke. The man who sang it sold a million records. You carry the record, they go around. <laughs> Deal with your underlying beliefs. The mindset you have determine if you become a champion or not. No one can take you where you are not willing to go. Think wealth and you begin to attract wealth. I didn't come to teach you to prosper because I came out of prosperity. I'm doing it because it's a revelation I saw in the world. I come from lack. I come from poverty. I come from not just poverty, intense poverty. I come not just from intense poverty. We were so poor. You don't need four letters to spell our own poor. Just two letters. P-O. Po. We're so poor. Poor people used to call us poor. We're so poor. My father will always look for the house nobody wants to live in. That's where we lived. When I was a young boy, we grew up in Zaria, Kaduna, Kano. In, in Kaduna, we lived in a village, Badiko village. Where is the town now? There they are, went past Badiko village. It's now a city. as a Cho. Now Badiko be this. When I lived there, it was all grass hot. Grass! Grass, man, grass! The only house with zinc on top, now the house where we they live. Now one soldier build them. No light. My father lived town, go live for village. We're so poor. We have no assurance that there'll be food tomorrow. 
Because the man was a compulsive gambler. Compulsive. Was playing the pools. He never fly. You know, go past Congo and Cameroon. Where go they, you go they, you go they do Baba Jebu. That time is Doncaster versus Dan Linton. Not Chelsea now versus Manchester. Chelsea 5, Manchester 1. Yes, up blues. Any other person keep quiet. Blow the money. I have no remembrance of new clothes. No remembrance. You go to school, now you're home. You don't go, my papa no worry. I didn't know I was brilliant. So even a person who goes to school, go no say I'm brilliant. I no go. Now when I come show, I can't see say, everybody they follow me for behind. Hey! So brain day here. I remember one time, I said, I think primary two was army building. Primary two face there, primary three face there. Then they ask, ask question for primary three. I did primary two. Primary three, no, no. I can't do my hand like this. I can't answer them for them. My teacher can't get angry. Their teacher said, no, get angry. This guy should not be there. He should be here. I see you on top. <laughs> it's not where you started. It's where you finish. Stay with me. I'm about to close very soon. Are you getting something this afternoon? You should run your thoughts. Not your thoughts running you. Every time your mind tells you, this is Nigeria. There is nothing in Nigeria. Things are very hard. Run to Canada. If you want to go Canada, that's okay. Well, let me tell you one truth. And by the time I finish my teaching tomorrow afternoon, you will have to ask yourself, if you really catch the vision, do you want to go to Canada? Because, you see, all the Nigerians, when they move for, for this nation, go live for Canada and Britain. I've lived in, in England now, 37 years. Most Nigerians abroad only have a middle class life. A car and a nice house. Finish. Nothing more. A car and a but suppose in this Nigeria God gave you a problem to solve and you are the main supplier for 200 million people I have a young man in KRCC Nigeria one day the British police saw him buying suya or something like suya in London uh, what do they call it now um, no, there's this one, the uh, Arab cell. Sh no, no, it's not Kilishi, no Shama. Kebab, thank you. He it was, it was buying kebab. They said, where's your passport? He showed them. He no got visa. He they still wait. He read first degree economics, Nigeria. Uh, now, so they carry this brother. Carry and call Nigeria. But before he came, some people wanted to buy a material for a brewery in Nigeria. He had helped them before he left. As he arrived, you find that nobody has the material in all the breweries, the bottling companies, water companies, uh, Coca-Cola companies, all the breweries. He became the sole supplier. Today, the containers he brings into Nigeria are close to 100 every year. He go go live for Canada. Now answer me. He go live for Canada. The answers, the problem you will solve that will put you on global map, God will open your eyes to see it. 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 Shout amen three times. So listen to me. Everything you see around you came from a thought. This camera in front of me came from a thought. Even the cameras have graduated in their quality. I own a whole TV station. So I know what I'm talking about. 
they've graduated. The better they become, the more the people are able to sell. It never appeared before. It didn't exist before. Somebody saw it in their mind. The cars on our road, somebody saw it in their mind. The seat upon which you sit, somebody saw it in their mind. And don't tell me, there's no problem anymore to solve in Nigeria. Who said so? Or you may be saying, but sir, I have no money. Think the thought first. Then the money will come to you. And I pray, I anoint your hands from today. Today is the poorest you will ever be. 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 Shout amen again. Sit down, sit down. So your thought is your startup capital. What you need to start business is not finance. It is not cash. It is a thought. Then you can begin to get into the things you want to do. Your thoughts are your ability to come out of negative. Your thoughts bring you out of shame. Andrew Young said, I have about concluded that wealth is a state of mind. That anyone can acquire a wealthy state of mind by thinking rich thoughts. James Allen said, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts will take you. Franklin D. Roosevelt said, men are prisoners not of their fate, but prisoners of their own mind. Walter Anderson said, you and I are not what we eat. We are what we think. So wherever you are today is your thought. I have cousins. I have siblings. All they want is what's in my hand, not what is in my mind. They will never come to my seminar. I teach wealth creation around the world. I've seen men walk in unbelievable, unusual, supernatural favor. But they will not come. They just want me to raise them. To give them money. Under this hot sun, you have come to this meeting. Ah, your story will change. You will never be the same. I repeat again, you will never be the same. Your story will change. Your thoughts are totally your own. Your thoughts are yours. You create them. You are responsible for them. Your thoughts are your master blocks with which you build your own life. As your mind grows in strength, your thoughts and your thoughts increase. On Saturday, I'll be teaching the young men who have paid to be on the Wealth Academy 20 ways to start and run a good business. Because until you have your own business, you will forever work for other people. Because you fall in one of four categories. You are either an E or an S or a B or an I. E-S-B-I. E means you are employed by other people. They determine your life. They determine your income. They determine what you get. Inland revenue also charge you a higher tax. Because you are being paid by someone. You are selling your hours. International Labor Organization says that your employers must only ask for eight hours. Although Nigeria employers don't ask for eight hours. They are just, they just tell you, you should be glad you have a job. Oh. So they own you. You are the one who is in the, wake up in the morning, rush to work. Come back home, have some food. Watch television, go to bed. Wake up in the morning, rush to work. Come back home, have some food. What television? Then some Nigerians have moved to the next category. They are self-employed. It is a bit better than the E. When you are self-employed, 
They're the ones selling some small, small things. Recharge card. You run your own company. You have your own camera. You do recording, video recording. You have no staff. But it is going on. You are better than the first man, but you are still selling your hours. He said, how much are you going to charge us? You are the only one doing it. You are the one who will run around. You are the one who will do the recording. You are the one who will do the editing. You are the one who will do the finishing. You are the one, you are the one, you are the one. The third category is when you begin to run a proper business. And this level, you begin to hire people. One people, one person, two, five, fifty. When you begin to hire a thousand, your state governor will come looking for you. You will not be the one looking for him. When you start to hire a thousand people, the government will want to talk to you. You will not be the one looking for an opportunity to meet the governor or meet the president and have a selfie with him. And then one day will come in somebody's life here. When you will move from being just a business person to being an investor. At this level, you are looking for people who have business. For you to own 5% of that business, 10% of this business. You are looking to own something. To buy shares, to buy stock, to buy land, to buy real estate. Or you meet a young man, two men from, from this year's youth conference who are starting a tech, a tech startup. And they are looking for an angel investor. Their idea requires 100 million naira. And their idea will work. Maybe it's an idea that will make it easy. But Ba wants to teach. And he wants the Bible study to be watched by every reader. I'm giving you an idea already. And he wants every branch of redeem to watch it simultaneously. Without hassle. And not having to have unusual equipment. And you created the tech to make it happen. You need an investor that will help you with the initial equipment and the initial cost of putting it together. This is a level where some people are. They are investors. They put their money in business. They are no longer hustling. In fact, they are busy playing golf when people are using their money to do business and the return is coming to them. They, it is not their age. It is their stage. Not age, but stage. Not age, but stage. Somebody's story is changing. I said your story is changing. I repeat your story is changing. From today, God will fill your mind with good thoughts. Inspiration will fill your mind. You will rise to a new level. You will achieve what your fathers could never achieve. You will achieve what your mothers could never achieve. You will break new grounds. Shout amen with fire. So number one, think differently to get results. Think differently to get results. Number two, don't let main street way of decision making hold you from your future. Number three, live an outsized life that is bigger than the small dream of yesterday. See five years, see ten years, see twenty years. Number four, stop selling your time. If you sell your time, you will remain middle class. You will never enter the realm of wealth. Number five, know that everybody you know who have impacted their world, they don't sell time. They own their time. They multiply their life. Number six, move into using other people's money, like I show you, for real estate. Go to the banks. I have a dream. I have a vision. Don't worry. And they said 15%. Take it. Buy the land. Build 10 apartments. Don't build big massive house, mansion. Build one, one bedroom, two, two bedroom. Too many young people are looking for it. Sell all out. By the time you sell, you get profit. You buy the next land. Stop chasing 
and looking at others do it, start doing it yourself. That then, another building you build, the next building you build, don't sell it. Ten apartments. Get tenants there. As the tenants are paying, the payment they are paying is paying the loan you took. As they are paying, is paying the loan you took. <laughs> you are moving away from middle class. You are moving into a new level. Number nine, you need a middle, you need a, an abundance mindset. Stop thinking small. Start seeing abundance. Abundance is not dressing abundantly. Abundance is not driving a car that says you have abundance. Abundance is continuously creating wealth. Moving from employed to self-employed. Moving from self-employed to business. And then at a level, not just being a business person, being an investor. So that you have an investment in everything going on in the land. In everything going on in the land. You own your own thing and you are involved in other people's things. Let me close this afternoon by sharing two or three testimonies then I'll pray for you. In 2001, I was invited by Redeemed Christian Church of God Central Parish, Abuja, to come and speak. It was an all-night prayer meeting in Eagle Square. It was my first time in Abuja, 20 years ago. First time. So I left England. My load did not arrive. It went to Jamaica. British Airways carried my load to Jamaica. But there was a young man lives in England. Born in England. Didn't even study much. Was into buying and selling shirts and ties. And he was in Abuja at that time. So some people called him and said, Pastor Matthew's load did not arrive. He needs something to wear to minister tonight. And the following morning, I'm speaking at Aso Rock. The guy, blah, 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 he got me two suits, two shirts, two ties. Even though the, the trousers, I had to be pulling it up. At least we went through it for that night. But this young man began to listen to my teachings on wealth creation. It was a celestial church. After a while, he booked an appointment to come and see me. He said, sir, through your teachings, I've received Christ into my life. I believe in what you have taught on wealth creation. I want to step out of my regular. I'm thinking great thoughts. And I believe if you pray for me, my life will change. He knelt down. He said, sir, pray for me. Pastor Belema, I prayed for this young man. And he shocked all of us. What you never hear Nigerians do in London. He did it. He bought land and built 12 apartments. In London. In a part of Hackney, London called London Fields. He built 12 apartments. He sold 9. He kept 3. He came back to me. He didn't finish any degree. Oh. Some of us, we have more degrees than a thermometer. He knelt down and said, Sir, I'm going to South Africa. Pray for me. I laid hand on him. I prayed for him. He went to South Africa and built 125 houses. In the high brow area of Greater Johannesburg, a place called Centurion. From there he called me. Where are you sir? I said I'm in Ghana preaching. He came to Ghana. I was at the golf course playing golf. He came to the golf course with his wife. He said where should I go again? I said I'm not your financial advisor. He said you are doing better than them. You are doing better than them. I prayed for him. And the Lord said he should go back to his country Nigeria. Pastor Belema, the young man came back to Nigeria, cut a long story short. He met someone who was selling an acre of land on Probing Road, Ikoi. He built 40 apartments. 
and sold it for 1.5 million dollars. Don't be jealous. Say praise God. Let me shock you. Let me shock you. It shock you. It shock you. Pastor Velema, as I'm speaking, the guy is building three towers right now on Alexander and Ikoi. Three towers. So if you drive through Alexander on your way to to work, wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, have some food, watch television, go to bed. You will see three towers as you are approaching Ikoyi Bridge on Alexander. You will see three towers. One is 14 floors. The second is 16 floors. The third is 21 floors. And he has already bought the land behind. I won't announce the flaws that are coming to that one until he gets his approval. Don't know much about geography. He didn't finish any degree. But he changed his mindset. In the book of Luke chapter 15, Verse 16 and 17, the prodigal son changed his mind and said, I will arise and go home. And I will say to my father, I have sinned and I do not, I'm not worried to be called your son. Make me one of your servants. Today, I want you, you're going to scream something. You're going to tell the devil, I changed my mind. I change my mind. Tell the devil. I change my mind. Tell the devil. I change my mind. Look at your neighbor. Tell them. Tell the devil. I change my mind. Look at three people, tell them, tell the devil, I have changed my mind. Tell the devil, I changed my mind. I changed my mind to succeed. I changed my mind to prosper. I changed my mind to succeed. I changed my mind for abundance. I change my mind to be above. I change my mind to be a winner. I change my mind to be a champion in life. Tell the devil, I change my mind. Tell the devil, I change my mind. Tell the devil. I change my mind. Tell the devil. I change my mind. Tell the devil. I change my mind. 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 Put your hands together. Give God a blow. I change my mind. 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 Change my mind. Change my mind. I change my mind. 
Somebody say it again. Tell the devil. I changed my mind. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. It may not even be just the subject I addressed. But issues came to you with, to, came with you to this meeting. Battles came with you to this meeting. The devil has been saying you will not overcome. You will not bypass all this trouble. You will not leave the challenges of your father's house. You're going to make an announcement with your mouth. Tell the devil. I changed my mind. Tell the devil. I changed my mind. Tell the devil I changed my mind I changed my mind I'm changing for progress I'm changing for favor I'm changing for blessing I'm changing for a turnaround I'm changing for a breakthrough. I change my mind. I see some of you sowing a seed to back your confession. So I'm going to say this thing for the next five, ten minutes. You have a seed you want to give, even if there's no basket there. Throw it on the floor near the basket and it's gonna still be a blessing. Tell the devil I changed my mind. Tell the devil I changed my mind. Tell the devil I changed my mind. I changed my mind for favor. I change my mind for progress. I change my mind for victory. I change my mind for holiness. I change my mind for increase. I change my mind for testimonies. I change my mind for healing. I change my mind for blessing. I change my mind for the anointing. Tell the devil I change my mind Tell the devil I change my mind I change my mind for blessing I change my mind for prosperity I change my mind for victory I change my mind for anointing. I change my mind for creativity. I change my mind for lifting. I change my mind for blessing. I change my mind. 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 From today, you will never be the same. Your story must change. Your victory must manifest. Your testimony must manifest. Your blessing must manifest. Your joy must manifest. Your increase must manifest. Your turnaround must manifest. Your blessing must manifest. I want you to say it again. I change my mind. I change my mind. I change my mind. Every limitation on your life is broken. Everything that I've held you down must let you go. You are going from victory to victory. From favor to favor. From testimony to testimony. From blessing to blessing. In the name of Jesus. 
I like you to say seven times. I change my mind. 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 Tell the devil. I change my mind. When this year's conference is over and the devil wants to drag you back to the kind of life you used to live, to the kind of place you used to go, to the kind of people you used to hang out with, to the kind of limitation you used to believe in, you tell the devil, I change my, I change, I change my mind. I change my mind. I change my. I change my mind. I change my mind. I change my mind. I change my mind. Tell the devil. Tell the devil. I change my mind. Would you have to give the Lord the biggest praise? Come on.